and welcome to the story shed hope that you're keeping well and taking care of yourselves and that you've had a good day i have a classic story for you from guess what the children's bedtime treasury and this one really is as i say a classic it's one that i remember from from my childhood and i really liked so hopefully you'll like it too it's called the frog prince there was once a king who had but one daughter. Being his only child, she wanted for nothing. She had a nursery full of toys, a pony to ride, and a wardrobe bursting with pretty dresses. But for all this, the princess was lonely. How I wish I had someone to play with, she sighed. The princess's favourite toy was a beautiful golden ball. Every day she would play with her ball in the palace garden, and when she threw the ball up in the air, it seemed to take off of its own accord and touch the clouds before landing in the princess's hands again. One windy day, the princess was playing in the garden as usual. She threw her ball high into the air, but instead of returning to her hands, the wind blew the ball into the fish pond. The princess ran to the pond, but to her dismay the ball had sunk right to the bottom. Whatever shall I do? wailed the girl. Now I've lost my favourite toy. And she sat down beside the pond and cried. All at once she heard a loud plop and a large green frog landed on the grass beside her. Ooh, ooh, go away you nasty thing, screamed the princess. To her astonishment, the frog spoke to her. I heard you crying, he said in a gentle voice, and I wondered what the matter was. Can I help you in any way? Why, yes, exclaimed the princess, when she got over the shock of being addressed by a frog. My ball has sunk to the bottom of the pond. Would you fish it out for me? Oh, of course I will, replied the frog, but in return, what will you give me if I do? You could have my jewels, my finest clothes, and even my crown if you find my ball, said the princess hastily, for she was truly eager to get her favourite toy back. I, I do not want your jewels, your clothes, or your crown, replied the frog. I would like to be your friend. I want to return with you to the palace and eat from your golden plate and sip from your golden cup. At night, I want to sleep on a cushion made of silk next to your bed, and I want you to kiss me good night before I go to sleep, too. I promise all you ask, said the girl, if only you'll find my golden ball. Now remember what you've promised, said the frog, as he dived deep into the pond. At last he surfaced again with a ball and threw it onto the grass beside the princess. She was so overjoyed, she forgot all about thanking the frog, let alone her promise, and ran all the way back to the palace. That evening the king, the queen and the princess were having dinner in the great hall of the palace, when a courtier approached the king and said, uh, <clears throat> uh, Your Majesty, there's a frog at the door who says the princess has promised to share her dinner with him. Is this true? demanded the king, turning to the princess and looking rather angry. Uh, yes, it is, said the princess in a small voice, and she told her father the whole story. When a promise is made, it must be kept, my girl, said the king. You must ask the frog to dine with you. And presently, the frog hopped into the great hall and round to where the princess was sitting. With a great leap, he was up on the table beside her. She, she stifled a scream. You promised to let me eat from your golden plate, said the frog, tucking into the princess's food. The princess felt quite sick and pushed the plate away from her. Then, to her horror, the frog dipped his long tongue into her golden cup and drank every drop. It's what you promised, he reminded her. When he'd finished, the frog stretched his long green limbs, yawned, and said, Now I feel quite sleepy. Please 
Take me to your room. Oh, do I have to? The princess pleaded with her father. Yes, you do, said the king sternly. The frog helped you when you were in need, and you made him a promise. So the princess carried the frog to her bedroom. But as they reached the door, she said, My bedroom's very warm. I'm, I'm sure you'd be more comfortable out here where it's cool. But as she opened the bedroom door, the frog leapt from her hand and landed on her bed. You promised that I could sleep on a silk cushion next to your bed, said the frog. Yes, yes, of course, said the princess, looking with horror at the froggy footprints on her clean white sheets. She called to a maid to bring a cushion. The frog jumped onto the cushion and looked as though he were going to sleep. Good, thought the princess. He's forgotten about my final promise. But just... As she was about to get into bed, he opened his eyes and said, What about my goodnight kiss? Oh, woe is me, thought the princess, as she closed her eyes and pursed her lips towards the frog's cold and clammy face and kissed him. Open your eyes, said a voice that didn't sound a bit like the frog's. She opened her eyes and there stood before her was a prince. The princess stood there in dumbstruck amazement. Thank you, said the prince. You have broken the spell cast upon me by a wicked witch. She turned me into a frog and said the spell would only be broken if a princess would eat with me, sleep beside me and kiss me. They ran to tell the king what had happened. He was delighted and said, You may live in the palace from now on, for my daughter needs a friend. And, indeed, the prince and princess became the best of friends, and she was never lonely again. He taught her to play football with a golden ball, and she taught him to ride her pony. One day, many years later, they were married and, and had lots of children. And, you know, their children were particularly good at the game of leapfrog. And that's the end of the story of the Frog Prince. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any suggestions or stories that you'd like to hear on the channel, then let us know at the Storyshed blog at gmail.com. That's the Storyshed blog at gmail.com. Just drop us a line. Let us know what you think it would be like if you were turned into a frog. Say tomorrow, what would you do? Have a think about it. But in the meantime, take very good care. Be well and bye-bye. Bye-bye.